Hi, I'm Jim Edgar, and I wanted to share an audio routing hack that will help you in a Google Meet directed session when you're using a Mac OS computer. This was actually something I tried several months ago, which didn't work. So it was kind of a pleasant surprise that it did so recently. Now, if you've been doing any voiceover gigs in the past few years, you've likely had a remote directed session, one where the client is listening to you through your microphone in real time. Now the gold standard for these is to be working through Source Connect. That's where the client is recording you live on their end through the Source Connect app. I've had a Source Connect studio set up for years and it just makes everything simple. They have the audio as soon as the session ends and everyone is just on to the next thing. Of course, not every client has this and in a lot of cases, they're not working through a formal studio, so we kind of have to pick up the slack. And although the audio is not optimal, Zoom has become a fairly common option for running a directed session, uh, which is when you are in charge of doing the recording and handing off those files later. When you're working with Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Google Meet, you're doing the actual recording and then sending those files over later. Now, occasionally during those sessions, the client might decide that they need to hear playback of an earlier take or the take that you just did. Yeah, either they didn't hear it well enough when you did it, or they want to hear some detail again. And even under the best conditions, this gets a little stressful. It shifts us out of voice actor mode and into engineer mode. Now, many directors are pretty sensitive to this and will minimize these requests, but it is part of the service that we often need to offer in some sessions. Now, luckily in Zoom, this is pretty trivial. You can either share your screen and then play computer sound, and that will bring the audio into the session, or you can use the share screen advanced tab to just share the audio from your computer without showing the screen itself. Now, since we are on the Mac side of things, the first time you do this, you'll be asked to download the Zoom audio device driver. Well, this is a virtual audio driver. That means it's in the software of your computer rather than an actual wired connection in and out of your interface. The Zoom audio device then just shows up as an output in your recording software once you install it. To play the audio out to Zoom, you just select that, then share the screen or share your audio. While you're in the Zoom session, you'll actually hear the audio you're sending out. It'll play back to you over your headphones as well as through Zoom to the client on the other end of the connection. So they'll hear the recording, you'll hear one another in real time. It's a slick solution, one that works pretty seamlessly. Now, whatever else you might say about Zoom audio quality, they definitely did this pretty well. But what happens when a client wants to use Google Meet as the connection method? Now, the issue here is that Google Meet and some others are actually browser-based. That means they're running through Chrome or whichever browser you're actually using. This is slightly different than the standalone app which Zoom utilizes. Now, the issue is that with the Mac OS's core audio design, Routing the signal directly between separate applications is kind of tricky. And by tricky, I mean, it ain't gonna happen by itself. Now there are third party options. The most solid audio routing tool for the Mac OS is Source Nexus from Source Elements. But as of right now, that's a little tricky to get your brain around the routing specifics. It's a product that's been geared more towards audio engineers who are a bit more familiar with the idea of matrix routing. And that may be a little more than you wanna wrangle. And there's a company called Rogue Amoeba, great name, who makes Audio Hijack and Loopback, but both of those kind of insert themselves deep into the system audio of your computer. And again, they have their own logic of operation. You need to kind of set that up beforehand. It's not something you might do just on the fly during the heat of a session. And many actors just don't want to mess with that. So I found another hack recently. I had in my studio notes that I tried this last year and also that it did not work. So either I messed up, which is always a strong possibility, or the Meet team at Google may have changed something in the audio controls a bit, or it also could have been something with the Zoom audio driver itself. Now it relies upon you at some point, say today, having actually shared audio through a Zoom session and downloaded that Zoom audio device driver. When you do that, Zoom installed the Zoom audio device, which shows up under your output device menu. This is, exact, for example, in Twisted Wave, and it shows up with my regular interface and some other options that I have for inputs and outputs. But the key one is the Zoom audio device. Now, if I select that as my output and I start playing, 
I don't hear anything because I'm not connected to a Zoom session. And what that driver does is it pipes my audio out into this virtual driver that then Zoom shares with everybody who's in the session. When you start a Google Meet session, what will occur is that you have the ability in that, oh, hi there, what you have the ability in that window to set an output speaker and an input. Now, in this case, I'm routing the output to my SSL. I would normally have headphones on in the session, but my input, you can actually see that I'm talking into this microphone. Google Meet is hearing that. We can tell because that little pulsing icon in the lower left corner here is reacting when I say something into the microphone. Now, what I can do is change that to something else. And in this case, I actually see that Zoom audio device shows up as an input source for Google Meet, and that's the key. So if I select that, all of a sudden, you'll see that my voice is doing nothing. So as I talk, that little monarch, that little icon down here is not moving at all. Google Meet does not hear my voice. But if I switch back to Twisted Wave, and if I make this a little smaller so you can confirm it, if I start playing this audio here, you see that it actually starts bouncing the icon up and down. I can double check that here and see, even though I'm not talking, you're getting input into Google Meet, which your client will then hear. So it's kind of a bit of a kludge, as they say. I have to have the correct output in my software. And in Twisted Wave, that's the simplest going to output device, Zoom audio device. And then I have to switch my input device in Google Meet to that same device. Now, as those of you paying attention may have noticed, it's not hearing me at this point. So when I do that, the client can no longer hear me. I can hear the feedback from the client because they are coming to me through my headphones, which is attached to my interface. But if I go ahead and start that up, and if I'm talking to my client, they're not hearing me right now. So I would have to go to my options. I would have to go into my settings. I would have to say, hey, let's get the mic attached. So I would have to go back up to my SSL. And at this point, you can see, again, that icon confirms that I'm getting audio from my microphone into Google Meet. And of course, what that means is that I have the ability to patch my audio out of my software anywhere that that Zoom audio device seems to show up. I should be able to take that output and patch it into my browser-based Google Meet or possibly other means of connecting. So I'm going to just zip out of this particular session right now. Now, I'll admit, this is a bit of a kludge. They cannot hear me speaking until I swap the audio input inside of Google Meet back to my booth, back to my audio interface. But that does solve the immediate issue of just playing stuff back during a Google Meet session so that they can hear a take really quickly. We don't have to mess with third-party products. And we are actually using a third-party audio driver, that Zoom audio device. That's what's connecting between our recording software output, in this case, Twisted Wave. And this bypasses the need to invest in separate software. Now, I'll admit this could go away, this could get fixed, quote unquote, uh, but for right now it does seem to be pretty solid and I've used this in sessions. Now, one other thing occurred to me while I was kind of playing with these ideas and that has to do with limiting any extra mousing around. Uh, one of the great tools inside Twisted Wave is the fact that anything which appears on a menu inside Twisted Wave can be routed to a keyboard shortcut. So those of you who are noticing little details, may have seen that under my audio output device menu, there's a little option two next to my Zoom audio device. And there's an option one under my SSL output. So that actually means what I did was in Twisted Wave, went to my edit, edit keyboard shortcuts, and created a keyboard shortcut to those two specific menu options. So I can switch between outputs at the keyboard, which again, may simplify things a little bit within the session. So right now, for example, option one, you see a little blip on the screen and I have switched to my output device of my SSL. That means I can easily change my audio output in Twisted Wave between those two without having to actually go up to the menu and then the submenu. It does save up, you know, step 
in the whole process. But if I'm juggling a session and I'm trying to manually change things inside of Google Meet, it's just one less little thing to worry about. I do want to make clear that I'm a big fan of Source Nexus. It's a solid tool, extremely dependable, works all the time. Rogue Amoeba products are also solid. I've used those as well. Uh, they're solid and dependable tools. And if you're doing more complex routing in your setup on a regular basis, it's well worth investigating those options. But if you had a session this morning and all of a sudden the client said, hey, I'd like you to make sure that you play stuff back, you may not have time to get all that stuff in order and understand it and have it be nice and seamless so it's not dragging our attention away from being brilliant behind the mic. If a client wants to use Google Meet as your directed session and they ask to provide audio playback, your answer is now yes and. And you should test this on your own system. It's possible that either of these two companies change things. It's possible that a new version of the Mac OS, uh, good old Apple themselves, might change something that could fracture the feature. So definitely test this before you connect with your session during your pre-flight. And if you want to discuss more comprehensive options for routing audio in your home voiceover studio, you can easily set up a session through my site. Uh, just ask jimvo.studio. There's a quick button there for schedule a session. If we haven't worked together, there's a little free 15 minute uh, consultation that I do for new clients. And I look forward to working with you and I hope this has been helpful for you. So thanks for your attention. Now go be brilliant.